Well, let me tell you just a little bit about Tim and Donna, and we will get started with, or uh, we will invite them up here. You are in for a treat. To refresh a little bit, we've been talking about value, true value. We've learned that we are valuable because we are valued. God values us inherently. It just happens when we are a child of God, He values us. And because He values us, we're able to produce value in our society. We're able to make money. We're able to make a living. We're able to impact people with our relationships. There's so many incredible things that come when we realize our true value. Today, Tim and Donna are going to be talking about finding value in purpose. And let me tell you just a little bit of a backstory. Last two nights ago, they came on Friday night. They came to spend the night with us. Tim spoke Saturday morning at men's breakfast. But on Friday night, I had two just unbelievably vivid dreams. You know, God speaks to us in many ways. If you, if you read in the scriptures, dreams is one of those ways. I had one dream, and it was, it was uh, I'm not going to go there. But the second dream, it was, the second dream, it was just so impactful. And it, it, I mean, I could visually relive it right now. I'm going to tell you about it later. I believe in the month of September we, we would be a good time to tell you about that. But... As I shared the dream with Tim, Donna, and Morgan, they helped me to kind of interpret it. I think Donna's got this uh, Joseph skill set going on here, because you know in the Bible, Joseph interpreted dreams. And that is, that, that is a gift today. If you read Corinthians 12 and 14, there are the gifts of that interpretation. So she helped me to interpret that, and really it had to do with our church and moving forward in our purpose. So I just, I won't go too deep into that, but... Tim and Donna, I, we've had the pleasure of knowing for, well, since July of 2012. Uh, we served together on staff at a church in Sparkburg, South Carolina. Uh, it became Free Chapel, if you know Jensen Franklin. He was their pastor for a while. They served on staff with him. And the Lord has called them to a new season of ministry. And there's just no telling where it's going. But we're honored <coughs> to have them today to come and talk to you and I. About finding our value and purpose. Are you ready? Yeah. All right. Can we give a big Destiny Church welcome? Come on, come on. life 
I always like to see Paul on, on Facebook. And that's what you guys are. You are modern day Paul. And so every time you go out and you love on people, don't don't sit there and eat so much humble pie that you have like humble pie diarrhea. Get me right on that. But like you have to live out what it looks like to love on people. And people don't get to see how awesome you guys are unless you go on social media and live it out. Love on that fireman. Love on your waitress and take a picture with them. Make them famous. Jesus just loves that, and that's one of the things I'm pretty passionate about. So during this message, if you guys want to take a picture of us, if you want to take a selfie and post it, one of the things I want you guys to do, and I'm going to challenge you all that do have social media right now, is go ahead and go to Destiny Church International, and you're going to check in so that all your friends and family especially those ones you're believing for for salvation, all your levels of influence are going to see exactly how you're showing up to be with like-minded people in the kingdom. So that's something you do every Sunday. Can I get a commitment for those of you who have social media? Every Sunday, live it out loud. So who are we? I mean, so me and Donna, we, like, like David said, uh, we, we lived this farm work for quite a bit. But let me back up. Me and Donna actually met in the military. I was actually in the Navy for eight and a half years. Uh, I met Donna actually when I was stationed in Hawaii. Uh, I brought this beauty home kicking and screaming because she didn't want to leave the island. But, Literally. Yeah. But anyway, so, that, so we actually have been married now. We'll be celebrating our 14th year anniversary in October. So pumped about that. <laughs> so exciting. It's been, a, a, it's been like we've been dancing all this time. Uh, and it's been a, a wonderful thing that God's using us to, to step into this next realm of, of what he's called us to do within this season. It's been incredible of what he wants to do with us. So we're excited to go two by two, uh, like, the, like the word says, to go out and just preach his word and share his love. So that's, that's who we are. And how do you want to talk a little bit about how we know? Well, yeah, Pastor David shared it. You know, we got to meet them in Spartanburg. And I'll tell you, it's just amazing. To watch how God used them in our city and so we were so extremely honored um, when they asked us to speak here with you guys especially even at the tent revival we fell in love with this family right here um, so you guys are so awesome so we just counted a huge blessing to be able to be here with you so let's pray father we thank you so much for this time together lord we just pray that you would speak through us father that you would anoint our lips and allow us to be your mouthpiece father that you would show us and share with us father your love father in this moment we get to share together as believers father in Jesus name. Amen. 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 Okay, so we're going to talk to you guys about purpose. Okay, but let me tell you this. Do you guys know how expensive you are? Think about this for a minute. Do you know how expensive and how valuable we are? All this time you guys have been learning about value and things like that, but I want you guys to grasp this. It cost God nothing to create the universe. It didn't cost him anything to create the earth. All the gold and metals that you find on this earth it didn't cost God anything to create those things. He'd done those things in just an instant. You know, we hear of heaven, of the streets of gold, right? The pearly gates, the different uh, precious stones that create the walls of heaven or New Jerusalem. Those, thing, those things didn't cost God anything. Not a thing. But it cost Him everything for you and I when He sent His Son to die for us. Everything that He had, He gave Him. Willingly and lovingly so that way he can have a loving relationship with us That should tell you how expensive you are and how much of a purpose he's put inside of you So we're going to talk a little bit about purpose and the value of your purpose And uh, I'm going to let my beautiful wife talk about our first action step that helps you identify what your purpose could be Yeah, so every person can value their kingdom purpose by applying these action steps and um, if you don't mind, we're going to have a keynote scripture, hopefully be able to put on the screen, of Joel 2.28. Um, so if you guys have your Bibles, or, or if you have your Bibles on your iPhones, <laughs> then go ahead and pull those up. Um, so what does it look like to value your kingdom purpose? One of the things that I always, um, and you guys kind of set it up perfectly with the song, I am a child of God. You know, what if the word said, you split the sea so I could stand right here at the shore? Is that what it says? Are you sure? Yeah. Unfortunately, we see so many Christian spirit-filled believers that will, you know, fill a seat and they're just like, I'm right here at the shore. And I believe so, uh, so much that the enemy has got us with blinders on to believe that our purpose is done. 
Your purpose evolves. Trust me, you are not done if you are not dead. Okay? So if you don't know what your purpose is, today you will. And not only will you, but you're actually going to act it out. Number one, the first action step. And I encourage you, remember, you're on social media, so put these action steps. You might be the only church today on social media that your friends get. Give them this message while we're going through it. So, perfect. Thank you. So it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Your sons, not just your sons, come on. women, your daughters, and there's no junior Holy Spirit. Come on. Your son and your daughter shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams. Okay? There's no age limit here. If you're not dead, you still have a purpose. Come on. And your young men shall see visions. Do we have any seers here? Have you have you seen a vision lately? Who hasn't seen a vision lately? Raise your hand. No, even if you're not a seer, raise your hand if you haven't seen a vision. I've not seen a vision yet. So you all have seen a vision. Okay. So what I want you guys to understand is that if you haven't seen visions reoccurring, you're going to today. And it's going to be here on out. And the cool thing is, is you're going to actually be able to act upon them. Because God did not split the sea in 2018 so we could stand on the shore. Yeah. Every day we should be walking forward in the kingdom building, building call of our lives. So, first action step is share your dream verbally and often. And so a lot of times people go, well, that sounds great on paper, but what is a dream? Well, God gave you a dream. He's the dream giver. So it may be something, for example, in Genesis 37, 5 and 6, he gave Joseph a dream. And you know what? Joseph didn't hold on to it and say in our Christianese that we're like, just keep that close to your heart. You don't want to share that with too many people. No, that's not true. He shared it because he knew that when God gives you something, it's spoken revelation. Revelation is not to be hoarded. It's not up to us if we get the credit for it or not. It is to be shared. Okay? And so he had haters. His brothers were like, excuse me? But haters are going to hate. You can't see all the haters with your love glasses on. So you're supposed to share that dream no matter what. And you're supposed to share it often, verbally, every day. Until it like, even if it like makes you nervous and makes you want to puke and you're like, oh gosh, they're going to actually probably laugh at me if this doesn't ever come to pass. That, the results are not up to you. You are to share that dream and you're supposed to share it often. And the cool thing about it is... It may have been something when you were eight and you were like, because I always said, don't, don't judge me, but I always said, I'm going to be a solid gold dancer. I just dated my time there, but I really did. I was like, oh my gosh, I am so going to be a dancer. And somewhere along the way, somebody was like, mm, you don't dance that well. And so, you know, and maybe obviously that's why I'm up here and not in gold shimmies, but, but. You know, one of the things that I love is that I'm telling you that because that was a dream of mine. And for some of you, dancing may very well be what you, your purpose is led to. And so that dream can only be fostered in nutrition if you share it. So, so whether it's a fireman, whether it's a dancer, whether it's an artist... I want you to dust that thing off and I want you to pull it out and start sharing it even before you leave today. Your call action, step one, is to post it on social media. Those of you who have one, post it boldly and then share it today for those of you who that, that don't. Awesome. Okay, so let's look at action step number two. Thank you, honey. So, awaken your purpose. Awaken your purpose is step number two. What from your childhood, let me ask this question from, from, uh, to you. What from your childhood do you choose to remember or forget? Because more often than not, what happened in your childhood, you may want to duplicate. If you had a great childhood, a great upbringing, or something that you would want to forget. And maybe even overcompensate and 
try to make things better in your life now. So think about that. What in your childhood are you trying to forget? Or what some of your things in your childhood are you trying to remember? You know, for me, I shared this last uh, yesterday morning with the men. You know, I was sexually abused by my father, okay? And I'm not going to go into details with that right now because we don't have time to do that. But um, I sought closure from that experience, okay? I sought healing and I sought closure. Had I not sought healing and closure, I would never be able to express the healing that God was able to encounter on, onto me and bring hope to others, to open the door wide open for other guys to be healed. Or people who, who are going through that, who are just going through that hurt and pain, now I'm on the other side of hope that brings them or that draws them to not to me, but to the Heavenly Father, because I'm just a sign of hope that just points to the Heavenly Father of what can happen to somebody, okay? So now that I'm up here, I'm able to just share that with other people. So whatever has happened in your past, some more often than not, is rooted and what your purpose can be, okay? So whatever that may be, don't, don't try to shy away from it. I know it may hurt to get to that point, but God wants to heal those moments in your life. And he wants to use that. He wants to turn those beauties into ashes, and those ashes into beauty, so that way you can bring hope to others, okay? So it's not a mistake to where you are. So I, I challenge you to allow the Holy Spirit to touch those places. If they're so hard to remember, to touch those places in your life to be healed, amen? God plants dreams and purposes inside your heart, okay? Your series of unfortunate events, or not in vain, He uses it to change the things in the world. You're not the only one that, has, that whatever bad happened to you, you're not the only one that's happened to. And He wants to be able to change those things in the world. And He wants to use you, a believer in Christ, to show, to show that there is hope for other people, amen? Let me ask you this. Uh, the job that you're currently in, or if you're a student, that's fine too. What did, why did you select the job that you're in? Was it circumstances? Was it because you're fulfilling a dream? Was it because of the money that might come towards or come from that job that you may have? I guarantee you, if you have a dream or a vision like you want to aspire to be something, that seed was planted by God inside your heart. And scripture says that God knew us in our mother's room. He knitted us together. We sang about that earlier. He knitted us together. He knew exactly what he was doing when he created you. He knew every day. He said in... in and the Word of God, it also says, um, in, in Psalms 139 somewhere, it says that He knew, he, he knew your, your life like a book. He knew exactly from the beginning to the end what your life would be out before we even lived a day. He knew exactly what you would do. So He planted those seeds of hope. He seeded those planted those gifts, those, those talents, those abilities in you when He created you and needed you. Because He knew that when your time had come, that you would bring hope, that you would be another sign of hope to those around you. Amen? So I challenge you to take that, that moment and to think about uh, what happened in your life could be used for God. Now I want you to do one last thing, and, and a couple things I want to turn this back over to my wife. She's going to give you step number three. Look at your thumb. It could be insignificant, right? Look at your thumb. Now look at your thumbprint. Now hold it up to the person next to you. Match it up. Are they identical? If they are, you are in trouble because the FBI could be after you and if she did something. <laughs> Completely identical, right? Or no, not identical at all, right? We are all uniquely made for a specific purpose. And anytime you don't think so, look at your thumb. No fingerprints match. Not at all. You are created for something special. God loved you and planted a seed in you for a specific purpose yeah. in a specific time period. So the people that you're going to impact, think about why you are where you are in your job, your field, if you're a teacher, if you're a firefighter, if you're a grow officer, whatever you may be, just know that you're placed in that circle of influence to change that, that situation, to change the atmosphere. We are the light bearers. We carry the light wherever we go. We don't have to always bring the church. Yeah. You can be the Christ that they see, because if Christ the love of glory lives inside of us, we should be able to shine the light of love and hope to others. Amen? Amen. Yeah. Okay. So, let me... Let me um, let me tell you one thing real quick. I'm not going to get this right over to her. Okay? So, seven mountains of influence. Have you guys heard of this? Okay. So there's seven mountains of influence that shift and change the culture. The reason why you are where you are is because God placed you where you are for specific reasons. Seven mountains of influence goes like this. There's, there's seven mountains that change a society. It changes a culture. It creates uh, the influences for that culture, or that society, or that country, or that city. Okay? Now, the seven mountains are actually careers. Okay? And... and and then they go like this. So you got your religion mountain. That's an influential thing to, the, to a society, right? Influential for the religion. 
or the church, whatever you religion believe in. Mountain, not religion the mountain, spirit. not the religious spirit, right? The religion mountain. Then you've also got the education mountain. What we teach our kids, what we incorporate with our kids. So you've got teachers and administrators that operate in that, that mountain. Then you also have um, family. Those who raise their kids, you know, the, that produce um, well-meaning uh, adults. And I mean, you're raising adults, you're not raising kids, you're raising adults to be able to function in society. So you have a, a family mountain, okay? Then also you have the business mountain, you have the media mountain, arts mountain, you have the business mountain. So if, you, if you're if you operating somewhere in those mountains and you think, okay, I'm a teacher, so I must be in the education mountain. Yes, if, I, if I'm a business owner, then I know I'm in the business mountain. Just know that you're on that mountain for a specific reason, because wherever you are, that's where you are, because you're there for a purpose to share the hope of glory of God, okay? So never discount while you're there. You don't have to be a preacher or a pastor to be to share the love of God. You can share the love of God wherever you are, amen? Okay, so that's, so just know that you don't minimize where you are because God has a plan and purpose for you. But if God is calling you to do something greater, if you're in a job that you hate and you don't, that you don't like, you know, you know that God's calling you something, to do something else, you need to step into that something else because God planted that, that urgency or the irritation in you to do something else. If you have a, a, an amazing idea that you need to get out, you need to do that. If you're, if you're to be a business owner, to, to, to open up a business, you need to do that because God's staring in you that you need to do that because you, you have a circle of influence that you need to influence. Amen? Okay. So just know that. So to, fill your, to fulfill your kingdom purpose. And I'll give this over to Donna so that she can talk about step number three. Well, and before I do, one of the things that I love about that is I, I as you're talking, I'm thinking about the time where I heard Holy Spirit when we were in San Diego. Okay. Thriving. Oh, what we yeah. thought, um, because yeah. we were thriving yeah. financially, and I let me tell you, we were we were so in debt up to our eyeballs. Um, Holy Spirit, we went through Dave Ramsey, and we paid off debt. And I'm telling you, you guys, you're in for a treat with that. But one of the things that I um, am reminded as you talk about that is, what if you would, what if you wouldn't have left the Navy? Yeah. <laughs> we. We, we had so many people telling us, like, dude, why are you getting out early? You're, you're in the cush job. He was attached to the Navy SEAL team. He was also a search and rescue swim instructor. And so when I say he found his dream job, it looked like he found his dream job. But what happened was, and I was um, making buku bucks financially with IT sales. And so it was funny because God, we were also uh, with Dr. David Jeremiah's church out there. And we, we, you couldn't have told us anything. Yeah. We never knew that. We were in America's finest city, and then God told me, "Tell your husband that I want you to sell the house, and I want you to move back to." to this Spartan. is in 2007 when we got this morning. And I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna you lower. Well, first of all, Lord, you did this all authoritatively wrong. You should have told him. He's the head of the house. And he's like, I'm telling you. And I said, look at the time. I got to get to work. So I went to work and I sat on it for a year. Oh, oh no, it gets better. <laughs> Delayed obedience. I sat on it for a year. And I was praying that God would bless this man. And so, um, he, it got to a point where he was like every night, wake up, Donna, wake up, Donna, mm -hmm. <laughs> wake up, Donna. And I was like, ministry of the mom. <laughs> um, so finally I said, Tim, my goodness, we were supposed to move. We're supposed to move. I said, I think God told me. I think God told me we we're supposed to move, but I know we just bought our house and loving it. And he is like, Yeah, I don't know if God told us that. I said, I don't think, see, you're proof. <laughs> and so, um, so then we talked a little bit more and we said, You know what? We're going to wait and see if our daughter's heard it too. Yeah, she said the time, what? 15, 14? <laughs> she was, um, and she had just tried out for the senior performing <laughs> arts. San Diego and got it. Yeah, got it. So, so we were like, she's going to be like, absolutely not. She came home, and when I say this girl's filled with the spirit of prophecy, ooh, she came home and she was like, she, I said, S sit down, we need to talk to you about something. And she sat down and she looked at us and busted out crying. And I'm like, I ain't got to start yet. Yeah. 
And she's like, I know what you're going to do. God told me we're supposed to pick up and move back to South Carolina. And I said, oh, no. We just all cried. I love to tell you that we were like, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes. No, we weren't. So, um, so we went back to South Carolina, but not before the housing market crashed. And we she lost a quarter of a million dollars in our home. And God said, is your skin in the game yet, Donna? And so I'm here to tell you, he did not split the sea so we could stand still when we're ready. People's lives are at stake. And if your child was off the side of the road in a burning car, you'd hope someone would stop and actually help her. And yet we walk past people that are burning, going to hell every day. So as we move on to action step number three, which is in Habakkuk 2.2, write your goals. Actually get them on paper. Get them on paper and don't just do this on Facebook, but do it on Facebook too. But write your goals. Physically write them out. And I'm going to, I'm going to share with you um, what this looks like because I've always been the type that's, you got to be practical with me. You've got to break it down. Like I'd love to tell you I understand all this Hebrew and Greek stuff, but you got to give me life application so that I can move forward. So that's what I'm about to do. Are you guys ready? Okay. So you get out a piece of paper and you write down goals. Now, here's the difference between, you know, God wants to bless you and he wants to bless you, as you see, um, according to your obedience. Um, and so what I'm here to tell you is that you can be blessed, you know, just surviving blessing. Or you can go over here and go through thriving blessing. And what I found, so that you guys don't have to do the hard work, is that surviving blessing looks like him telling Donna, hey, go write down your goals. And I'm like, okay, after I watch this. No, turn the TV off and go right down the goal. I, oh, it's two weeks later and God told me to go right down the goal. I'm going to go right down the goal. Um, let's see. Well, I want to get back in the gym a little bit more. One. I really want to make the same kind of money we were making back in San Diego. Two. And three. I love my husband more. Oh, okay. And four, I'll have Christ-like character. And he's like, really? Really? Okay. But you have not because you asked not. So he wants you to write down, and I am challenging you today, and you can't unsee or unhear what I've already shared with you. So I'm challenging you all to write 33 goals today. Because I know that God wants to bless you guys here in Rainsville. I know it for a fact, and you're going to find out how I know it later, but it starts with each one of your obedience. Each one of you. So 33 goals today. Now, I want to help you with this because when somebody shared this with me, I was like, 33 goals? It can look like major bucket list things. It can be those things that like almost take your breath away, like if God really does it, I'm probably going to panic. Like, for example, when I wrote down that we're going to go to Israel, and I was thinking, how are we going to talk that kind of money? <laughs> write it down anyway. And then it was, we're going to preach in Israel. Yeah, right, God. Write it down anyway. And he actually had us speak on the Sea of Galilee um, with Free Chapel. And so had it, would it have come to pass if I wrote it down? Are you kidding me? No. I put the scripture to work. And you're going to put the scripture to work. You're going to write the vision down and make it plain for your life. Because you're not doing it for me. I'm going to go far. But this is about you. You're going to go far because you owe it to the city of Rainsville to go far. They're all watching what you guys are doing. And if, well, Destiny Church isn't really international. 
So what they're wanting to see you do is write down 33 goals and they don't even know what they want. They want to see you guys write 33 goals and then take them to your schools and say, girlfriends, look what I did. I wrote 33 goals down. Why? Because I'm moving forward. I have a plan for my life. And does it mean that you're going to sit there and hit bucket list items all the time? No. Some of them are going to be really simple. Like I'm going to, I'm going to wake up tomorrow with a good attitude. Help us, Lord. But they can think, but 33 goals. Okay, so I've given you a good idea of what they look like. But the important thing is, is you're now going to share these goals. Remember, you're sharing the dream. You're also verbalizing the goals. Why? Because accountability is so important. And remember, those goals are going to be some really scary looking goals for you. But one of the things that I love about God is he's not afraid to show out in you even if you're afraid of them showing out in you. And so, write those 33 goals. If you feel the need to write 100 like we did, run with it. If you, if you write 33 goals today, or more, please find us on, on Facebook so we can celebrate everyone win with you. And I'm gonna tell you now, will you necessarily hit every single one? That's not up to you. Remember, the results are up to God. But every time you get a win, I don't care how small it is. I don't care if you say, hey, Don, I woke up today with a great attitude. That was, Lord God, I'm going to celebrate with you from Spartanburg, South Carolina. So number three, write your goals. And then when, when you, oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. Go ahead, and one of the things I really wanted to point out, too, that was very, very big with us is um, you're going to also need to write in what you want to take away from your life <coughs> and what you want to keep. Make a list. Make a column. This is what I want to take away and what I want to keep. It may be some friends. Um, it may be uh, television. Um, it may be that you want to add leadership books in your life, which I can highly recommend any of Andy Andrews' books. Um, but you're going to want to add leadership books into your life, even if you're not a, necessarily a reader like we were when we started out. We got Audible. It's the best $15 investment into the world of your life ever. But one of the things that I know is that you're going to write things that you want to that you want to change, you want to keep, and things that you want to add in. Also, you want to um, the things you want to take away may be distractions in your life and what those look like. We wrote down too, and this is pivotal. We still have a vision board in our home, but a 90-day, uh, two-year five-year and ten-year plan. So when I say write goals, write 33 goals, write another bracket of what you want to take away and keep, and then you're also going to write out a plan. So. Awesome. Um, are you going to say hashtag goals? Hashtag goals. <laughs> yes, go ahead and put them on Facebook right now. Hashtag goals. Text three it's friends. Awesome. No, it's awesome. Once you get those things written down, it's, it's amazing what they do because now you've mapped out what God has envisioned for you because now you're partnering with the Holy Spirit. You're asking God, you're show me God what you want me to do. You know, show me what's possible in my life because sometimes you'll write things down like, like Donna was saying, like, how's this going to even be possible? But those five year, 10 year goals are more dream goals. What do you, what do you, what do you have? What dreams do you have in your heart that you want to see come to pass through your life? And they may scare you half to death, you know, and that's okay. Because God will, God will, that's when God can use his strength to align with you or help align with you to help partner with you to, to allow those things to come to pass. Okay, and, because that's, and what that is is giving you vision. Right? Sorry. And none of that is, most of those aren't going to be done in your own. I would, ne I would never went to Israel on my own. Yeah. I'm just being real. Yeah. So a couple of those dreams would have never came to pass had it been me thinking I'm going to do it in my flesh. And yeah. that's where... What Tim was talking about, going back to the pit, that really tough place in your life um, that's, your, that's been your dream, yet got attacked. That, that area that was meant to keep you down, that, ha that inner healing has to happen first so that that third step of writing your goals down can come to pass. Because now you're in a healthy state where you can actually say, you know what, God does love me. Yeah, that's awesome. So... So the next step is to respond to your vision. So once you have all those those goals mapped out, you got them all written down. You know, have a vision board, what we call it, a 
visual because now God's going to partner with you to see those things come to pass, okay? And then respond to the vision. You're going to take those steps, those scary steps, to, to step out to what God's called you to do next. You know, God will give you the vision he created. And if you had to give me a vision, ask for it. Just ask God to give you a vision for your life. You know, there's, both, there's books that are written about you in heaven that you have access to if you just ask. God, what do you have envisioned for my life? while I'm here on earth. You're not just here, you know, waiting, warming the bench seat, you know, at the bus station, waiting for God to come pick you up. You know, that's not what, we have a plan and a purpose for our life, okay? And he wants to use you, he wants to partner with you, but sometimes we just sit on our, in our blessed assurance, sometimes we just, just waiting for God to come get us with the rapture. But he's got a plan and assignment for each of us. Ask God to, to show you what that vision is, okay? And so, I know we have our, um, we have a special treat for you guys too, because we're gonna share with you a little bit in probably like four or five minutes here yeah. about what your what the prophetic word was spoken over Rainsville yeah. four or five years ago of this area yeah. where you guys are sitting in. Yeah. So did you guys know you guys have a kingdom assignment yeah. in this area? We're gonna show that. So if they can cue that up and just hold that, we'll tell you when to play that in just a minute. Um, but also after that, we're gonna open up a, a, a prayer time. You know, so if, if you guys want to be able to know what your purpose is, I'm not gonna give you your purpose, but we're gonna pray that God show you in a vision or a dream or show you while you're driving home or while you're having lunch at, you know, at Kelly's Kitchen or wherever, that you have a purpose designed for you specifically, okay? So the other thing is stay yielded to the leading of the Holy Spirit, okay? Um, one, of my, one of my things I wanna do was be able to share the love of God to anybody and share my testimony without like fear of doing that, you know? I'm just praying for somebody and without fear, you know, because I remember we were at another church in, in Gaffney, South Carolina. Um, Donna would do this all the time. She'd come up to me while we're in the middle of, of service. She goes, hey, God told me you need to pray for him. I so wish God, like, told God Well, God didn't tell me, so I'm not going to, you know, I'm not going to pray for that person. You know, so but God was, God was, God was showing me that he could use me if, you, if I just stay yielded to the prompting of the Holy Spirit. God can do that to God. You know, and so God can use Donna or he can use me to, to pray for somebody. And before I did that, I was terrified to do so because I'm like, well, what if I get it wrong? Or what if I didn't say the right thing? Or, or what if I just look dumb going up to that person and say, hey, God told me to pray for you. It may sound a little weird, but you want to be praying for your ankle. You know? So there's, there's moments that you know, God will give you those opportunities to respond and be yielded to the Holy Spirit to act in obedience and say, because he wants to show you how powerful he is through you. He wants to partner with us, right? He wants to partner with us. And that's, and that's the exciting part about that we get to partner with the, with the Holy Spirit because he's living in us, not just as a host home. He wants, to, he wants to utilize your arms and limbs and lay hands on the sick, you know, and lay hands on the dead, lay hands on those who need healing. Amen? Amen. And that, you know what, that's something yeah. that I'm so glad you brought up because one of the things that I'm always astounded by is how many people will go, you know what, like, you know, what are we commanded to do? <laughs> I mean, the great... The great commandment is to love. That love and spirit and truth, you know, if you're, if I'm going to your funeral and you have not lived out your purpose and Holy Spirit speaks to me and says, that person has not lived out their purpose, the enemy has attacked them and tried to put them right there. If he tells me to raise the dead, I'm not going to go, well, no, Lord, that's just in the spiritual realm. I'm going to be like, I'm going to go ahead and tell you now, I'm going to look, if, you're, if he's married, I'm going to say, well, hey, wife, you know what? <laughs> Do I have your permission? You know, because Holy Spirit just told me. Yeah. And I've literally had situations where the wife was like, he was not supposed to go. Yeah. He was not supposed to go. You do whatever you do. And there are people who are raising the physical dead today. Mm -hmm. That's how it's supposed to be. Mm -hmm. That's what we're called to do. Can I tell you that, it, that it's like easy peasy? No. Honestly, uh, I'm still in practice. And then the day they raise up, I might poop my pants. <laughs> I'm being real. I'm being real, but I, I am more fearful after what I've seen God do when I don't obey him immediately than I am of man. I am not going to go to the grave with any regrets of seeing that person in heaven and him going, I kind of wish you'd have just done what the Holy Spirit said because I had three people I was still supposed to speak to. You guys don't understand how important it is. It doesn't look the same. We're just so far generationally removed from the Peters and Pauls who were bold enough, the Smith Wigglesworths who were bold enough to punt dead babies off the stage because Holy Spirit said they are not supposed to die. Yeah. And they got fresh when they hit the ground. And I believe that these are the people 
that are just wild and crazy enough to believe the power of the Holy Ghost lives in you. And I believe that you're no longer going to go to funerals. I mean, I get it. Some of them have done their purpose. But if there, if by all means, if you are supposed to lay and you are lay hands on the sick and they will be healed, then believe it. Yeah. Yeah. Believe the word of God. That's right. Raise people from the dead. That wasn't just for Jesus. You're going to do greater things than him. So how many people have you rose from the dead? Yeah. If you go none, well, hey, neither have I. But I'm practicing. Yeah. I'm practicing. I'm 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 nervous when I'm I'm like oh God. You're going to have to pick me up if, if I see one eyeball go like it. But I'm practicing. I believe God. Yeah. I believe Come him. On. And he needs us. Yeah. Because when people don't live out their purpose, he did not intend for us to just go, no, that was just a spiritual thought. Mm. And so I'm going to walk out the things that he commanded us to do with boldness. Mm. And I know you guys are going to help me with that as well. Yeah, so respond to the vision. And, and in um, Acts 16, 9 through 10, Paul responded to a vision that was given to him. You know, all this time he was permitted to go and preach the gospel. But when he got to the Asia and in, in that Asia of Mysia, he couldn't go into that area because the Holy Spirit prompted him not to go into that area. But here it's, it picks up that uh, Paul had a vision at night and a man of Macedonia stood and pleaded with him saying, come over to Macedonia and help us. Now, after he had seen the vision, immediately he sought to go to Macedonia, concluding that God had called us to preach the gospel to them. So wherever you go, just know that God will give you a vision. Yep. Not all the time, but if God gives you a prompting by the Holy Spirit to do something, act and respond to it. If it's just to buy somebody a sandwich, you know, or to, to stop and pull over. And last night we were, um, we were driving home, it was kind of late, and uh, there, was this, there was this lady walking in the middle of the road, and, and, uh, and she looked like she was kind of stumbling a little bit. And, we're like, man, that didn't seem right, you know. And then Morgan, uh, she said, hey, let's let's turn around and see if she's okay, you know. So we turn around and uh, we roll down. I was like, ma'am, are you okay? She said, yeah, 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 I'm good, I'm good, you know, because we, we never know, you know, what what what's going on in this world, you know. We don't know, but to be able to, to provide that opportunity, to, to, just to take the time and, and pray for somebody, even nothing happens, you know what you're doing? You're displaying love, and you took the time out in your life to stop and actually pray for somebody. That's that's showing love. That's being Jesus, you know, with skin on. That's absolutely what that is. So if we can do that and understand that when we get that prompting of the Holy Spirit in our in, in a vision to say, pray for that person, or buy that person a sandwich, or just pray, just whatever that may be in your job, you know, just love on them, encourage them, whatever they need. And hey, your dress looks pretty, sir. Your, your dress looks really pretty. And I <laughs> pray that you cover my that So you know what I mean? Whatever that may look like, you know, just understand that God wants to encourage us. You know, we can love the hell, we can love the hell out of people. Literally. Love the hell out of people to where they want to come to. You want to give that, if you want to share that real quick about Kim, about just that time that we were able to, to love on it. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, in Spartanburg? Yes, in Spartanburg. Yeah, so one of our dear friends, there, yeah. um, one of our dear friends, um, she, uh, it's interesting because one of my other friends, Mary, had introduced her to us. And actually, Mary ended up passing away a couple minutes, a couple years after she introduced us to Kim. Um, but she was a coworker, so Mary was being a pastor within her her job, and she knew her calling, she knew her purpose. Um, so she introduced me to Kim, and she said, "Hey, Kim, who was about 20, 19, 20, She said, uh, you know, "She just needs to be loved on." And uh, I was asking the Holy Spirit who I should introduce her to, and um, and she's. A lesbian and I he told me that it's you and so I'm like okay perfect because I can tell you now I love people I love people every one of them are God's children and he puts people in their way and when I lived in Hawaii I thought honestly I wouldn't have had a lot of friends if I'd have been like oh oh you're gay or lesbian I want to love to you no they were my friends they were sometimes the only friends I had so one of the cool thing about it is um is she brought her to me and I was like, hey, when are we going to go hang out? Like, let's go get coffee or whatever. And so we hung out for actually about two years. Matter of fact, within two months, um, I said, you know what, Tim? Her girlfriend is actually really cool. Yeah. Um, and she's actually so, from my hometown. I cool. said, you know, the crazy thing is, is, is she's from your hometown in California. 
like literally they same high schools so it's a divine appointment and so we go okay well so we're all going to have them over so we brought them over to our house and we're like you know doing what they love to do and so they're bonding and we're bonding and um the cool thing is is like it wasn't about a year it just naturally the relationship unraveled because they were being loved on, and Jesus was getting into their presence. Yeah. He was stepping down and being a part of their lives on their terms. And it naturally, organically, he dealt with it. And the cool thing about it is, Kim came to me one day and was like, you don't understand how much of an impact you made on you. I said, you don't understand how much of an impact you've made on my life. And she said, well, guess what? I've got a boyfriend now. Yeah. <laughs> and, um, and I really want Tim to meet him because he's heavily into drugs, but I believe God has a plan for his life. And we still connected with her other girlfriend and reached out a couple of times until we realized it was a a thing that we just had to keep praying for and bless and release, but keep in prayer. But her boyfriend was someone who's, who got led to God, got saved, come to church, set on fire. And I'm telling you, had we not loved her, yeah. Yeah. when she was with her, yeah. we would have never met him. Yeah. Yeah. So often it's about not about who you're talking to, it's about who they're going to lead you to if you'll just stay long enough without judgment. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you for sharing that. God is so good. And he wants to do things like that in your life. And he wants to use stories like that to encourage you that you can do the same thing. You can just love on people. You don't know where that relationship will lead. And she's led 10 more to that church, by yeah, the way, she since has. then. <laughs> she's a little influencer. Let God do the conviction. He just wants us to love people. He just gave us two commandments down here. Love God with all your heart, with all your mind, and love others as you love yourself. That's it. Yes. If we can do those two things, we, we've succeeded in what God's called us to do. Amen. Okay, so here's what we would like to do. Um, we want to share this amazing prophecy. You want to set it up? You want me to set it up? Um, yeah. So Let's one of the things. Want to share. Yeah, one of the things I want to point out too is, like we said, we are definitely going to um, have the altar team down here, the team leaders, um, to be down here to to pray for you because we know that that's so important because we want to seal this off in immediate activation. Remember, you guys are going to actually do something today that's powerful with writing your goals and declaring them, but your dreams awaken your purpose. So just to reinstate those four action items, your dreams that you're going to share verbally awaken your purpose. You want to share the rest? And write your goals and respond to the vision. Like I said, when you write your goals, that's going to unlock the vision that God's given you. And you're going to respond to it. And you're going to respond to that vision and do so. Because yeah. God's got a miraculous reward for us all. And he wants us to partner with us, like I said, which is awesome. Okay. So if you can play that prophecy over you guys. Yes. So this is a Damon, uh, hang on one second. This is a Damon, um, Damon Thompson prophecy spoken over this area. And this includes all of us that are sitting in this room because we all live in Rainville, in this area. Amen? Amen. Play that, please. America is perfectly positioned for fire. Just went to the 4th of July fireworks show. Interestingly, in order to, we're at a ball field. There's 5,000 people watching a baseball game. In order for us to, right now I get, I'm getting revelation of going to the water fountain. In order for us to enjoy the fireworks show, the first thing they have to do is kill all the other lights. It's a dark hour, brother. Good. People are not interested in revival. Good. Because this is going to show up real good. If it's real, real dark, watch this. This is going to be something worth seeing because this is going to change the fabric of a nation because instead of us locking ourselves in our buildings we're about to take fire to a nation my wife can tell you this today 
I testify before Almighty God driving today and the Holy Spirit spoke to me. And he said, tell anybody in the building from the city of Rainsville, Alabama, that in September, the rain will start to fall in Rainsville. And by the time October hits, it will begin to flood every street in Rainsville, Alabama. Fort Payne is going to burn with the fire of revival. I saw the Cobb County, Alabama, bursting forth with the flames of revival. Somebody shout, the light is coming. That's you guys. That's you guys. Do you know what it looks like to have been sitting in a church building before Lake Lund ever hit? That's you guys. It's gonna, he's going to do greater things. He goes from glory to glory. So what happened in Lakeland, he's going to do way better than Lakeland and Brownsville. Yeah. Yeah.